Welcome back. Today we shall continue our discussion of quantum mechanics. We talked about quantum states and wave function in the last video on quantum mechanics. In this video, we'll have a look at another important object in quantum mechanics, operators. In the last video on quantum mechanics, we saw that each quantum state of a system is represented by a vector inhabiting a Hilbert space, which may be finite or infinite dimensional. These vectors are known as kets by the physicists. In linear algebra, we have a matrix operating on a vector. The result is also a vector. Matrices are linear operators expressed in a particular basis. But bear in mind that operators have no particular basis but an abstract notion of operation. An important mathematical fact is that the inner product between two vectors yields a scalar, but an outer product yields a matrix. And this is because the inner product between two vectors is equivalent to matrix multiplication with the first vector Hermitian conjugated, and the outer product between two vectors is equivalent to matrix multiplication with the second vector Hermitian conjugated. Hermitian adjoint is equivalent to taking the complex conjugate of the components of matrix and transposing it. Bear in mind that vectors are n by 1 matrices. Quantum state is a cat, which has an angular bracket pointing to the right. The Hermitian adjoint of a cat is a bra, which has the angular bracket pointing to the left. Bra is a row vector, which is also a linear functional that maps n-dimensional cat onto the complex plane. And this is known as the bracket notation, or the Dirac notation. In the product between quantum state has a closed pair of angular brackets, and the outer product between quantum states has an open pair of angular brackets. The mathematical equivalence of inner product and the matrix multiplication with the first vector Hermitian conjugated is something known as the Reed's representation theorem, which is overlooked in even some of the advanced molecular quantum mechanics textbooks in chemistry and even some of the introductory physics texts. Let's begin our discussion of operators by considering the outer product of i hat in ordinary Euclidean 3D geometry to give us some basic intuition. Outer product in this case simplifies to a tensor product, as all components are real. Taking the outer product is equivalent to the matrix multiplication with the second vector Hermitian conjugated. So taking the outer product is equivalent to the matrix multiplication with the vectors with the second vector transposed in this case. The result is a 3 by 3 matrix with 0 everywhere except row 1, column 1 entry, which is 1. Allow this matrix to operate on any arbitrary 3D vector. The result is projecting this arbitrary 3D vector onto the basis vector i hat. And this argument generalizes easily for the two other bases in 3D geometry and the basis cats in quantum mechanics, which are a state of certainty. In other words, the outer product of basis cats operating on an arbitrary quantum state has the effect of projecting that quantum state onto that basis. This is linked to something called the collapse of the wave function, and it deserves its own video. Let's now sum over all possible outer product in definite state i, and let's see what the operator does by allowing this operator to operate on an arbitrary quantum state, psi. So i operating on quantum state psi is the same as the sum of all possible outer product of lowercase i operating on quantum state psi, using the definition of operator i. And the pair of angular bracket of psi and lowercase i that is adjacent to psi are closed, which means this is an inner product. And this is in fact a discrete version of the wave function, which tells us how much each definite state contribute to the overall quantum state. So the sum is the quantum state expressed as a linear combination of its basis i. So therefore, i operating on quantum state psi leaves the original quantum state psi unchanged, and i is known as the identity operator or the unit operator. Using our geometric intuition earlier, this operator projects the quantum state onto all of its bases, then add all of them up, which is again the original quantum state. As operators are outer product, they have a form of a matrix, specifically n by n square matrix, where n is the number of dimension that the state i spans. As quantum state can be infinite dimensional, the operator may need to operate in an infinite dimensional space, which are infinitely large square matrices. And if you compute the sum of outer product of the basis cats, the result is in fact a square matrix 
with 1 in all of its diagonal entries and 0 everywhere else. The definite state i is completely arbitrary, as the identity operator has no specific basis. Therefore, we can write the identity operator as the sum of outer product of definite state of position, definite state of momentum, or even definite state of energy, which are also known as stationary states or energy eigenkets. Let's write the identity operator as the sum of outer product of energy eigenkets, and let's modify the operator slightly by scaling each diagonal entry by some scalar EI, which is the value of energy of the state EI. Let operator H to operate on a definite state of energy EK. When we write out the content of H explicitly, we spot that the inner product between EI and EK is a conical delta delta IK. Conical delta is a simple mathematical object. It is 1 when the two indices match, and it is 0 when the two indices don't match. The conical delta has the effect of parameter elimination, which collapses the sum, and the result is the original definite state of energy that the H was operating on, but scaled by its energy. Vectors that only get rescaled after an operation is an eigenvector, hence definite state of energy is an eigenket of operator H, and the scale factor is the eigenvalue, which is the energy of that state. The result of this operation is one of the most important results in quantum mechanics, and turns out this equation is the time-independent Schrodinger equation, TISE. Operator H is the energy operator known as the Hamiltonian, which is named after William Rowan Hamilton. He was a Protestant Irishman who was appointed the Andrews Professor of Astronomy at Trinity College Dublin, whilst still an undergraduate. Although he did not contribute to astronomy, he made important contributions to optics and mechanics, and pure mathematics with his invention of quaternions, which is the first non-commutative algebra. Let's now consider the specific form of the Hamiltonian operator. It is an identity operator expressed in energy basis with the diagonal entries of eigenvalues, which are energy of definite state of energy. The nth diagonal entry is the energy of the nth definite state of energy. This is only a very brief introduction to operators in quantum mechanics, and we placed an emphasis on the matrix form of operators to give us geometric intuition and allows us to use the powerful tool of linear algebra. But operators don't necessarily have to take on the form of a matrix. Operators can always achieve the same purpose by operating on a wave function, because wave function tells us all the information we need to construct the quantum state. There are two important classes of operators in quantum mechanics, which are the Hermitian operators and the unitary operators, and we'll discuss them in a future video. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.